Hi guys, Mr. Sonnenberg here. Today we're going to be talking about momentum and mass. So, momentum, it is the measure of an object's motion and how likely it, it is that the, that object will remain in motion. So, if I say carry your momentum and I'm skating okay, on ice and then I glide and I don't take any strides, my momentum will carry me forward down. Depends on how, my mass is going to depend on how far I go and also the, the velocity and my speed, how fast I was going, is going to tell me how far I can travel. But we have to look at force when we're looking at momentum. So force is any push or pull on an object. Okay, so the size of the force required to move an object, that depends on how long you apply the force, the mass of the object, and then how fast you want the object to go. So if I was to push you, you would probably move while I've applied force to you. Okay, and or if I pull something, then I'm applying force. But if you take a look at these pictures here, you're going to see when we talk about momentum, I have a cruise ship, which are awesome, by the way. Um, I had the opportunity to go on one. They're great. Uh, if you've been on one, you can attest to that. And if you haven't, it'd be something definitely one day you'd probably want to do. They're really awesome. But then canoes are also cool. And living on the lake, I can't wait to take the canoe out in the spring, in the summer. But what's the difference between these two? Well, one is gigantic and the other one is not so, uh, not so big. Which one of these do you think you would be able to stop its momentum? The canoe or the cruise ship? So I know I'd probably be able to stop a canoe, uh, but the cruise ship, I don't even think I'd want to try. <laughs> Wouldn't be doing screencasts anymore, that's for sure, it'd be done. But anyways, force. Objects that are not moving will not, will not move until they're pushed on or pulled with enough force. So you won't move unless I push you if you were just trying to stand still, right? So objects that are moving will keep moving until enough force is added in an opposite direction to stop them, okay? So uh, we, like I said, opposite directions. So uh, we need something pushing against it that'll eventually stop it and get its velocity to zero. So objects with a lot of momentum will take up more force and they'll take more force and longer to stop. So that cruise ship, it's going to take a lot longer to stop it because it has greater mass, okay? And it's gonna carry more momentum than a canoe is because it has less mass. So when we're calculating momentum, momentum is calculated by multiplying the mass of an object by its velocity it is traveling. So it's kind of speed. So the heavier and faster objects will have more momentum. So the formula for it is going to be momentum equals mass times velocity, which you can see right here on the screen. Okay. Oops, that's not bad. And then so the mass is going to be in kilograms, the velocity is in meters per second, and then the momentum is actually going to be calculated in kilogram meters per second. And that is right here. Okay. So I just want you to uh, pause the screencast and see if you can use that equation to figure this out. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to pause it, and now I'm going to see if you can check your answer really quick. So a 70 kilogram girl jogs at a pace of 5 meters per second. What is her momentum? First of all, what do we know? Well, the first thing we know is we know the mass equals 70 kilograms. And then we know the velocity equals 5 meters per second. But we don't know what the momentum is. Okay. We don't know what that equals, the momentum. But we can determine it. Okay. So I'm just going to go mo for now. Okay. Instead of writing it out. But we know that our formula is going to be mass times vol or velocity. And it's going to equal, well, we have 70 kilograms. I'm going to multiply it by 5 meters per second. Okay. So then our mo momentum is going to be 350 kilogram. Oops, make that a little darker. Meters per second. Okay. So now we've determined the momentum. What is her momentum? Well, it's 350 kilogram meter per second. Okay, so hopefully your answers have matched up with the ones on the screen right here. Okay, 
So when we're, uh, we carry momentum, how do we slow it? Well, so we're talking about carrying this momentum, but how do we slow that? So my example would be maybe applying brakes uh, in vehicles, and that'll decrease momentum. But we have to understand how brakes work first, if we understand. So brakes use what we call friction. So friction is the force two objects exert on one another. So when they press against. So for example, brakes will do this in two ways. First way is they're going to take the brake pedal, it's going to activate machinery, and it's going to take the brake pads, and they're going to push against brake drums on the inside of the wheels. And I'll show a picture after this so you can better understand what the heck a brake drum is and a brake pad is, and I'll show you what they're doing. But that source of friction is going to slow momentum. So the brake pads are going, if there's a drum, when there's a pad, it's going to push against that pad, and it's going to create friction on the two surfaces, and it's going to stop. The second type of friction are the vehicle's tires, between the vehicle's tires and the surface of the road. So when we're braking, there's still friction as the tire rolls over top of the surface of the road. The friction between the two forces is going to reduce the momentum. So friction is going to change momentum. So what I was talking about with the uh, drum brake is going to, if, if you take a look, uh, right, what color should I do this in? Maybe this color. Okay. So, we take a look. Well, we have the drum, and the drum's going around the outside right here. And then on the inside, okay, you're going to see that we're going to have a brake pad of some sort right here. Okay. So now, we'll just call this right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm outlining it. Maybe I'll try it in red. Or is that green? Try that. Oh, that's green. That's red right there. Okay, see this right here? That I'm outlining and it has another one right here in dark. Okay, so those pads, they're going to press together. Okay, the drum and the pad. And it's going to create friction that's going to slow the vehicle down. Same thing over here. If you take a look at the picture of the bicycle, well, what happens is you have a metal frame or rim right here you can see it then you have a rubber brake pad what's going to happen is you're going to apply the force of this rubber brake pad friction between the two is going to slow the wheel down okay and then also friction from the surface of the tires here and then the, the road at the base that the tire is actually rolling on okay in this direction is going to create friction so that friction is going to be important okay so that's how brakes on a bike are going to have slow momentum, but then brakes on a car. And then we also, got, we also have uh, disc brakes as well, and the newer braking technology is a lot different. And, but same concepts apply. We apply brake pads um, to our brakes, and those brake pads are going to create friction. Friction also creates heat, though, and then it's going to create a lot of heat. But we're going to see friction on the tires and the ground. We're going to see friction between the two mechanical parts like a bike tire, the rubber pad is going to be on the metal frame. It's going to squeeze together, create friction, and that friction is going to slow our momentum. Okay, guys, uh, this has been momentum and mass. Hopefully you have an understanding of how to collect, calculate momentum, mass times velocity. Okay, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you on the next screencast. Okay, thanks, bye.